for the spin no St. Anne's rest. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I enter this debate today thinking very seriously about what this country has endured in the past few decades when successive governments have had to go through procurement and some have failed to protect the taxpayer willingly, some may argue unwittingly. And I was recalling as I sat there the genesis of this act, the parent act that we're seeking to make certain amendments to today via the current bill. And I was recalling my time when I was given the opportunity to serve as a temporary opposition senator. And the parent act was before the Senate at that stage. And these exact points were raised at that stage. The points were raised about having certain exceptions to the need for the, the procurement that is outlined in the parent legislation. And that's really one of the issues we're dealing with here today. To try and bring this debate back to the bill that is before us, if you would allow me, there are a few points I'd like to start by making. The first that has been missed by most is the definition of bid rigging. And the new definition that is being proposed for bid rigging is something that should not be opposed. Bid rigging will now mean con collusive price fixing, anti-competitive behavior designed to unfairly influence the outcome of a competitive tender process in favor of one or more bidders. And as I read this definition, it brought home one of the cases that I referred to in last week's contribution and the whole EMBD process and the, the litigation as is presently before the court on behalf of EMBD and the allegations made in there with respect to cartel behavior and bid rigging. But let's get to the meat of the bill here before us today, which is what is the section seven amendment that's being proposed. You see, I've listened carefully to the very weak arguments being made with respect to government to government contracts. And it, I recall in 2014, 2015, when we were debating the parent legislation, this was a big point at the time. And there may be many voices outside there who are screaming that they don't want government to government arrangements to continue in the manner that they are here, they, they have been taking place now for very selfish reasons. And that's something the population and the public must always be aware of. Always listen and try and work out what is the agenda. Is the agenda really the, the protection of the public's interest? Or is the agenda for those who are saying to subject government to government arrangements, to the strictest of sections of this legislation to protect their own turf? And what I want to tell the population of Trinidad and Tobago here today is that it would grind to a halt the government-to-government -government arrangements that have taken place for decades and the government-to-government -government arrangements that are favorable for the people of Trinidad and Tobago if those arrangements would be subject to these, this, the full gambit of this piece of legislation. So we reject that outright. 
Because what you're basically saying is you can't not only not trust the government of Trinidad and Tobago, but you can't trust the government of the other country with whom you're entering into an arrangement. And I take offense to one of the brushes being painted here today, which is the procurement of the vessels from the Australian people. Because you see, there is no shroud of secrecy, as just suggested by the last speaker. The last speaker, unfortunately, is getting himself very caught up, I observe, in just making these wild accusations and statements, and the last speaker is now becoming that person that the opposition pushes out there to throw these wild accusations. There is absolutely nothing secret about the procurement of the hostile vessels and the INCAT fast ferry, nothing. The Prime Minister of Australia, the then Prime Minister of Australia, Prime Minister Turnbull, in speaking to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Rowley, Dr. Rowley told him, listen, Trinidad has a history of using Australian fast ferries. We are in need of some fast ferries. We also want to increase our border patrol capabilities, and the Prime Minister of Australia is the one who said, listen, we've just started a new defense fund. Come and take a look at it. And invited the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago to have a working visit in Australia. And I was on that trip. So there is no secrecy. We did not spend a single 24-hour period in one place in Australia. We had to literally be on planes every single day moving from meeting to meeting, shipyard to shipyard, with the greatest levels of transparency. Every single day, the Prime Minister demanded that we put out a press release showing where we had been, the shipyards we had been to. When we returned from that trip, the Cabinet appointed a special committee. I chaired that committee, but it wasn't only of Cabinet members. It was of experts from UTT, maritime engineers and experts, attorneys at law and then invited the two shipbuilders to Trinidad and Tobago to compete for the taxpayer money of Trinidad and Tobago. And by doing so, we got the best price for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Unlike stumbling, unlike stumbling on a dockyard somewhere in China and saying, I want one of those. And that is how the government does government-to-government -government arrangements in a proper manner, and we will continue to do so. So to sit here and listen to, oh, how did you all procure those vessels? And there's a shroud of secrecy. It is absolutely untrue. That's the first thing I wanted to deal with. So all of this attempt to mislead the population that there's something surreptitious, something wrong with government-to-government -government arrangements, and therefore they should be subject to the normal rigors of procurement. It simply doesn't work that way. Another benefit of government-to-government -government arrangements, Madam Speaker, through you to the population, is that you very frequently have the government of the, the, the country that you're procuring from making financing arrangements. So built into that financial arrangement system is also oversight. The Minister of Finance talked about EFIC. One of the meetings we had in Australia was with EFIC, which is a government bank that is providing the financing for these vessels. And we were able to access those good terms of financing because we had serviced all of the loans of the past with EFIC. But what the opposition and others don't want the population to know is these financial institutions protect their money. So they have built into the whole financial arrangement ticks and boxes that you must go through, hoops that you must go through to make sure things are done properly. So that is built into government-to-government -government arrangements. Now, let's get to the meat of all of the noise, all of the fallacy, all of the misleading commentary that I've been hearing not only here today, disappointingly, but also on the outside. And you see, Madam Speaker, what I'm referring to now is a proposed amendment to Section 7.5 of the Act, where we're seeing that the Act, meaning the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Property Act, shall not apply to the following services provided to public bodies or state control enterprises. One, legal services. Two, 
B, financial services, C, accounting and auditing services, D, medical services, or E, such other services as the minister by, may by order determine. Everybody knows exactly as the Prime Minister said when it comes to legal services, you don't often put people to the rigors of a tender process for legal services. Exactly as the Attorney General said, you may have an injunction, you may have something quick that needs to be done now, immediate advice. You must have the ability as a government to go to the attorney of your choice based on competence, sometimes also based on the, the, the confidentiality or the confidence in dealing with the attorney you want to choose. Which government in the world has their hands tied in being able to choose an attorney? And if there's something wrong has happened in 2010 to 2015 where unprecedented spending in legal services took place, there's a forum for that. $1.4 billion spent in 2010 to 2015 in legal services. But that is not a reason to tie the hands of a government from choosing the lawyer that they want. Now, and I wanted to get to this point, I've avoided the conversation. I've not responded to the attacks, but today to sit and listen to once again the member for Separia, who every week wants to talk about me recusing myself 57 times, through you, Madam Speaker, I will now place on the Hansard for the people of Trinidad and Tobago what that is about. Because you see, the member for Separia wouldn't know about decency in public office, and I'll come to that. I will provide the evidence of Trinidad and Tobago here today why I say that. But first of all, let me explain. There is nothing wrong with recusing yourself. Recusing yourself by definition is doing what is right. And I make no apologies. I continue to recuse. But through you, Madam Speaker, and they're trying to cloud it in financial services, let me explain to the population as quickly as I can. Every single time the Ministry of Finance goes out for financing, they invite all of the financial institutions, all of them. The technocrats at the Ministry of Finance, the experts then analyze it. Interest rate, tenor, whether it is going to need security, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What are the fees being charged? And they then put forward what is the best deal. That will continue to happen. It has happened from 2015 to now, and it will continue. So there is a very strict rigor a test, an analysis being done on every single one of those occasions. And out of that, less than 3%, I think it's 2.7% of the financing for the state between 20, 2015 and 2020 was won by NCB Global Finance, the, the bank that they all like to scream about. My younger brother is the CEO of NCB Global Finance. So with all of the decency that I've been brought up with, the understanding of the law, I took the decision from day one, from the time a note comes to cabinet, once it mentions NCBGF, I am not going to participate in the conversation. And to hear that I am constantly, every week, including here today, having to be accused of doing something wrong, there's nothing wrong. He has, that bank is not owned by the young family. My younger brother works for the bank. He is an employee of the bank. And they have only won less than 3%. 3%. Not even the 10%, the 20%, the 30% kickbacks we've heard about. 3%. And I took a decision. Once that bank is mentioned, I recuse myself. I make no apologies for it. None. And I take serious offense to having to sit here and listen as the young family does what is decent and to be accused of doing something that is wrong. And I'm going to read something now into the Hansard. It is as a result of some forensic work done into a company called GISL, Government Information Services Limited. And you will never find anything like this with a member of the young family's name on it. So what I am being accused of wrongdoing is by recusing myself and I reject that. This is an email from somebody called Anthony Dial to Vasant Barrett, who is now a paria, somebody who they don't like in the UNC, but he was then a minister of government. And CC'd in this email is to do it government work at GISL. 
CC'd in this email to do with what is being carried out at GISL on the 28th of December, 2014, at 10.46 in the morning, a Sunday, from Anthony Dial to Vasan Barat, Barat V at gov.tt, so a government address. CC'd is a Gregory Bicessa. Greg Bicessa, G-R-E-G-B-I-S-S-E-S-S-A-R at gmail.com. So don't sit here, don't stand up on a platform every Monday night and attack when this is what you were part of. This is what you were encouraging. So a government minister from a government employee of GISL is copying the husband of the prime, then prime minister. And I'm ashamed that the member for Separia isn't here to listen to this. And it says, subject analysis of social media, etc., rebillboards. Because you see what was going on here is the use of taxpayers' funds, taxpayers' money to promote UNC under the government. And the husband of the then prime minister is in the center of it. And the question has never been answered why Gregory Bicessa, gregbicessa at gmail.com was copied on this. But I must sit and listen when I recuse myself, which is the correct thing to do, not participate in decisions related to finance, that as the result, when it comes to cabinet, it is at the end of the competitive tender process. And let me tell the population, subject analysis of social media, etc., rebillboards, minister, this is an analysis still going on, based on a troll of all social media. As you see, the positives far outweigh the negatives. There are a lot of neutrals, but what happened is that the many negatives tended to be well-known people in the politics. What is clear is that apart from you and Suruj, the PP support kept them out shut and did not support. Interestingly, ministers have rapid responses, etc., but do not throw these assets on the side of the party. So it's an admission that ministers were using government funds for rapid response teams on their own behalves. Do not throw their assets on the side of the party or the prime minister when needed. So why was the prime minister copied? What is a husband being copied? Was he a public servant? Was he on a payroll? This, had this happened, the initial reaction would have been vastly different. What I would like you to look at is the mechanism I'm using. It could be faster and provide instant reaction to any issue if you wish. It is part of the project icon social media component, which I'm soft launching in a few days. Of course, this capacity together with another asset that I will have on board will not be public. So that is surreptitious behavior, but will give us the ability to measure how much more closely and influence social and influence social media. Is this the Cambridge Analytica plan? Also, I sent you a preview of what our daily M&E fieldwork will produce. So we will be ready way ahead of anyone else in terms of public opinion research. It is something we will need to discuss on your return. But this report tells this story and it is useful for you to look at its potential. Tony. Madam Speaker, 48-1, please. Overruled. Please continue. I expect that. Because you see, for the first time I'm placing on the Hansard a response to these malicious attacks. A response from hypocrite. This is a response to the hypocrites. Because you will never see an email like, my, like that with anybody from my family to do with the government. And I am being accused of some wrongdoing by recusing myself. So I say there is nothing wrong with including financial services, accounting and auditing services, because the, the government and the Ministry of Finance will continue to do what they're doing. So to keep trying to throw me into this conversation, I reject it. And there's a lot more of this. There is a lot more of it, but it is time that the people of Trinidad and Tobago know the hypocrisy. I just, there's one other thing I'd like to respond to because I don't want the population to be misled. I don't want the population to be misled about the last part of the contribution from who I thought was a young lawyer that had a future, the member for Paris, 
for Bharataria Sawa. He just made the most astounding proposition that I've ever heard come from a lawyer in this chamber. He's saying that this bill here today requires a special majority. He's saying that a simple majority and a special is needed. This is, we have come with a simple majority to amend a special majority act, and there's a need for a special majority. Wrong. The parent legislation was already protected by the Constitution, by the parent legislation having the special majority. And what that means in law thereafter is amendments can be made because the whole bill, an amendment, is a change to the existing act. And then if the existing act has something that is changed, it is already captured by the first special majority. So don't attempt to mislead the population. So Madam Speaker, I see you nodding at me. How much time do I have left? Your time is now spent. Thank you very much.